Ann Middleton. I am Ann Middleton. I am with the Attorney General's Office, and I have practiced law on all levels of state court, district court, superior court, and the Court of Appeals and the Supreme Court. For the past 11 years, my practice all day, every day, has focused in the Court of Appeals and then on occasion before the Supreme Court. Uh, I am an appellate advocate. I'm dedicated to the practice of appellate law. And I highly respect uh, our, our Court of Appeals and our Supreme Court. The integrity of the court is of, of paramount importance to me. I believe that I have a reputation of candor with the court and with uh, my opposing counsel. Um, while I am a, a zealous advocate for the children of North Carolina, I'm the lead attorney, the state's lead appellate attorney for crimes against children and for adult sexual offenses. Uh, I also believe that every advocate who comes before the court has, uh, has the right to have a panel who is going to listen to their case or controversy on its merits uh, and on the basis of the facts and to make a decision that is uh, without regard to that particular judge's personal sensibilities. So in weaving that into your question, your question has to do with balance uh, and with allocation of resources, and it's sort of similar to what a judge uh, on the Court of Appeals would be required to do uh, in balancing competing interests before them. Um, and uh, our society, I think we do have to listen to what society is concerned with, but it's always give or take. It's an undulating process uh, between you know, conservative or liberal or uh, uh, defendant or prosecutor. Uh, and so what we need to look for is someone who is able to balance those interests and to be fair, regardless of their personal sensibility. Likewise, with the, with the, with the, um, with the question you have asked, uh, we need people in decision making who are able to recognize the importance of those issues but are going to be balanced and to, um, to, to allocate in a way that's fair and responsive to people who are not in power. And so in terms of your, your endorsement, I am highly realistic that I'm not someone that, uh, that you would likely identify with. I'm not a defense attorney. I don't do civil work. Uh, but I'm asking you, and so while I would be happily surprised and very uh, grateful to have your endorsement, I think that for me the better, uh, the better tactic would be to ask you as an individual to regard all of the candidates and to truly assess who you feel will be able to balance not just your strong interests but your opponents. Because as an appellate advocate, I know what it feels like and I will respect not only, my, not only what would be my point of view, but another person's. Thank you. Thank you. Harry Payne. I am honored to be included today and to be a part of this process, which is very special and very important. I'm also heartened because I ask uh, my core supporters and the members of my $100 club to come today and to put a water, water class right in, in, in front of them. And I'm pleased to see that all of you did. Um, there's two or three who have not sent in their, their contribution yet. If you could go ahead and do that, okay? I come by a little bit different path. I've devoted my entire legal career to building and shaping the policy of the workplace, the state workplace, the private workplace, every workplace. Beyond the core competencies that I believe that we all share, I practiced law for, for 15 years. Beyond those competencies, it's what you bring internally to the job, what you've been exposed to, the cases that you have tried, the people you know, the problems you've encountered that sort of shape your intensity. I've seen a lot, I've done a lot, 
I've shaped a lot of policy that matters to me a whole lot. That doesn't mean to say my personal perspective interferes with my judgment. It's just that I say that my judgment is important to be totally focused on both sides of the case. Your question is an important one, but I think it era to devote a question, the issue to deciding between this important issue on one hand and that important issue on the other hand. That pits two houses against each other who share the same concern. And that, in terms of legislative policy, is not a good approach. We should join together to raise the entire budget of the courts of this state, not pick between shrinking funds for one side or the other. Much of the uh, costs are constitutionally expected. But I think it is critical. Last year, $60 million were put into the administrative office of the courts to make the last two months of the, the fiscal year's payroll. That is the bigger problem. There is no recovery money next year. And to issue studies to show how this impacts us doesn't make it when everyone who is fighting for those appropriations says one thing, you don't understand, we're doing God's work, send money. It's time to advocate. Thank you. Thank you. Judge Cressy Thickpin. Good afternoon. My name is Cressy Thickpin. I'm a judge on the North Carolina Court of Appeals. As you all wear, as you well know, Governor Purdue appointed me August 23rd, and shortly after that, uh, 12 uh, folks who have spoken here today filed against me. I didn't realize that I had the ability to attract such a crowd, <laughs> and that I was that popular. But I did. Let me tell you a little, a little something about myself. Um, I normally tell folks that I'm from Fayetteville, but I actually grew up in three different places the first six years of my life. I spent here in Greensboro, the next six years I spent in Rayford, and the next six years I spent in Fayetteville. Um, the time that I spent in Rayford was the most memorable. Uh, we, when we moved to Fayetteville from Rayford, I remember that distinctly. I was about 10 or 11. And the reason that I remember that is because the house that we moved into had indoor plumbing. Now, that may not mean a whole lot to some of you and to younger folks, but I will tell you that if you have never had the call of nature late at night, in the winter, with snow on the ground, you don't understand the benefit of having indoor plumbing. My parents instilled in me a strong work ethic a love of education, and the value of telling the truth. I have been in private practice for 35 years. I have represented both plaintiffs and defendants. I was elected president of the North Carolina State Bar, the first African American elected to that position in the 66 year history of the State Bar. In 2008, I was appointed by Governor Easley to the Superior Court I have held court in 39 counties, and in August I was appointed to the Court of Appeals. When I was on the Superior Court bench, one of the things that I tried to do was to be fair, courteous, and impartial to all who appeared before me. I intend to do the same thing on the Court of Appeals. I have bipartisan support. I have been endorsed by the uh, past Chief Justices Burley Mitchell, I. Beverly Lake, and Henry Fry. I also have the endorsement of Judges Eddie Green on the Court of Appeals and Judge Gerald Arnold. I would like to ask you for your endorsement. Would like to ask all of you for your support also. And I uh, would like to ask for your first vote. If I can't get your first vote, I would love to have your second or your third vote. Regarding your question, 
I think that capital cases are very serious cases. They deal with someone's life. And I think that we have to allocate resources for capital cases as needed and as necessary. However, I think that we have to be reasonable and we have to be fair in the allocation of our expenses and our resources. I am a fiscal conservative. My friends would say that I'm cheap. I like to think of myself as being frugal. But I think that, and, and as a Superior Court judge when I was on the bench, when I would get the ex parte applications for uh, expert witnesses, what I tended to do was not give the full amount. I normally cut it in half. I'd say, go back to your expert, see if your expert can't do it for this amount. Uh, and what I found is that many times they didn't come back anymore. I think that we all have to share the pain of the fiscal problems that we're having in the state, uh, but I think that we have to allocate resources in a fair and reasonable manner. I'd like your endorsement, would really appreciate that, would like your vote. Thank you so much for having me this afternoon. Thank you, Judge Thickpan. Uh, two things before we break for lunch, ladies and gentlemen, that we are blessed in our state to have uh, a very competent and committed judiciary. You've seen today um, all of these folks who have come here today. Um, this is public service. Uh, this is something that these folks don't have to do and they're not in it for the money. You owe them your thanks for their willingness to put themselves out here like this and for their willingness to serve. And I want you to give them another round of applause for all of the candidates up here. Finally, uh, you've heard a couple of mentions about it today, the instant runoff process for the win seat. I'm not going to try to explain it to you because uh, I'm not sure I understand it, but I know if I don't understand it, there's no way that my neighbor does. Take some time. It's our obligation to make sure we get this right. So take some time to figure out how that works and tell the folks at your church, tell the folks at your club, tell the folks at the school how this works so that they can exercise their rights. That's their right. This is how we go to elect uh, a, a judge for the Court of Appeals. And we need to get it right, and we need to help the public get it right.